All right. It's time to put the lava slide to the test. Let me see how much copper I have, and then we'll get right to it. So really, the setup's pretty easy. Um, I just have, I start with two buckets, each with about three gallons of water in it. And the whole lava slide consists of five buckets. So then the second bucket is Um, I just took a bucket and I cut down about six inches and I just cut the whole bucket off. I drilled a hole for the hose to connect to a pump and this is just a 12 volt pump that I hooked up to um, a 12 volt battery. You can use electric, you know, any pump that you want. Um, the flow on this is 750 gallons per hour and it works pretty darn good. I would think that if you wanted to do something with a little more flow or an, um, this is maxed out, it is adjustable, but I do have it maxed out. A little more might help in the process, but basically, you know, cut it off at about six inches. Now this whole part will just sit down in the first bucket. So just drop that in. And now I just, while I'm not using this, I just have a little rack where I just set it up here. So if I'm changing the water or emptying out the, um, you know, the catch bucket there. So now this part, and I'll show in a little better detail. Um, this basically is three buckets that I kind of just, they're, they're smushed together. Um, the bottom two buckets are cut. So these first two buckets are just cut. And then um, I'll show better kind of how these go together. So the next two buckets, I just cut off the bottom and I cut out a slot. So when I put it over the buckets one and two, it fits right over the hose. So before you put the fifth bucket on, I bent over a couple pieces of copper pipe and I hang them on the top. That just creates a cavity in between the fifth bucket and then the, the fourth bucket. And when you drill the hole through it, that copper pipe gives a cavity for the water to flow from the top bucket down into the bottom bucket so it's just a recirculating system but I'll keep these three buckets just as one piece and um, you know this cutout that I showed earlier now that'll just fit over this whole part so basically the top bucket um, can fill up with water to those holes and then they overfill the hole. The copper piece is just keeping the two buckets separated all the way down to the bottom so the water has a chance to get down there. If you don't have something separating here um, the water will just back up, doesn't have anywhere to go. I could think of a lot of ways to do that. You could glue or epoxy in a plastic piece or you know this was just quick and easy and I had it so that's what I used. Um, Next then, I would just take my pail, um, I always put this in first, and I just, I like to have the handles kind of a certain way, but I just slide that in, and you know, I'm, sh I'm sure everybody's, you know, if you wanted to make one of these, you could use different size pots for all of this, but this, this is a three gallon pot and a piece of stainless steel that I cut that basically just covers any splash from the outside. Now, some of the experimenting that I first did, now that I have it set right, and it really does, is dependent on the angle, you know, around 20, 15 to 20 degrees is the right pitch that I've found to get the best consistent shot. Um, but I was, you know, it took me a while to figure that out and I was spilling some over the side which is why I built this shield and also the shield that I hang on the wall. The water and the hot metal, you are going to have some splash and you are going to have some spill. So it's really smart to be safe when you're running this thing, especially when you're first running it and testing it. Once you get to know your machine, it's like anything else. You use your best judgment all the time and make good choices. So um, now I'll show you how we hang the wall piece and the the lava slide so before I hang the lava slide 
I'll take the other bucket of three gallons of water and pour that just directly into the catch bucket and let that fill all the way up to those holes that we drilled out, the overfill holes, until the water starts to pour down into the bottom bucket. That way I know I have about the right amount of water. Also here you can see I have my drain hole a little too close to the hose line. It should be about 90 degrees away from the hose so you don't get any leaks. So the funnel part of the lava slide is actually um, just a sterling plated bowl that I think my wife picked up somewhere and it, and it has kind of some rounded corners to it. Um, so uh, the idea just came one day if I cut a hole out of the bottom uh, using a six inch hole saw um, and then I made a slice in the rim because it was just a continuous rim at that point so I made a cut and I bent the one side down and attached a bracket to it so in effect it kind of looks like a water slide and then I just cut a hole in a two inch steel pipe and I found the right uh, fittings a coupler and a couple reducers to attach the hose and I um, hooked it up and gave it a few tests Here I just screwed the steel plate into the wall because I wasn't sure at what height or what angle. So I started here and I was able to just adjust the angle. I do have a plan to build a, a stand to put the slide on and I actually have the metal purchased. I just need the time to put it together. But here I just um, you know, move the hose out of the way and we'll set it on top of the shield and lower it into the catch bucket. And then we're ready to turn it on and give it a test.
So this is the very first time I'll be doing this experiment and what I'm going to be doing is I want to dry out one gram of this material here which um, I'm going to put this in the XRF and I've obviously tested this before and it comes back as zirconium but it has a very large deviation and so I'm not sure if you've had a chance to take a look at the website anthonythomas.us but this is the material that I'm using in this experiment, which I believe and have tested to be kimberlite and ilmenite. And the ilmenite is very rich in titanium, while the kimberlite is highly rich in zirconium. And here you can see the darker band is of the ilmenite, and on this piece, um, the kimberlite, you can see the shaded area to the right, the darker areas to the right is the kimberlite. Now these are some refinings that I've done previously and I've extracted some titanium dioxide and some pure zirconium which I believe is a chloride and um, we need to process it and turn it into a metal so I'm gonna do this experiment and see if we can't alloy it into some silver run it through the electrolytic silver cell take the slimes and have the zirconium left so here I'm just gonna weigh out or what I was able to dry out from a previous experiment that we're storing in this test tube. And here we got 1.25. Um, so I'm going to weigh out from that just one gram exactly. And we'll set that aside. And now we're going to take the silver that we did in the lion sugar video. And so this is the pure silver cement, cement silver from the lion sugar video. And we'll put this into a crucible that I've used a few times with only pure silver and some borax to kind of pre-treat the crucible. So here we're going to add 100 grams. Um, exactly 100 grams of the cement silver and then to this we'll add the one gram of zirconium and I have tried before to just melt the zirconium but it, it just sparks and it wants to fly out of the dish so I'm hoping the alloy with the silver will be less volatile next I'm going to change out the catch bucket from the copper that we just poured and I went and got a new stainless steel catch bucket for the silver so we don't uh, run the risk of having any contamination. And then we'll put the shield back into the stainless steel bucket. And I, I did struggle a bit getting it in because this bucket was kind of shiny and the shield wanted to slip out, but I did manage to make it work. So let's throw it in the furnace and see how she goes.
And so we ended with just over 100 grams, 100.11 grams. And this stuff looks great. It has like a rainbow color to it. It really is stunning looking. And if you made it all the way to the end, thank you so much for watching. And may all your days be blessed.